Finally, the Commander X-16 is here. I've waited so long to do this. The Commander X-16 is a modern 8-bit computer, meaning that there's a real 6.5 CO2 CPU in the machine. Putting it in the 6502 family of computers along with your the Apple, Commodore, and Nintendo systems. But the X-16 isn't a clone or a copy of any of these machines, it's a brand new system that allows for all the close to the metal programming of its predecessors, while also fixing certain inconveniences with quality of life improvements which we'll take a look at later as we go through my nostalgia free view of the computer and the overall Commander X-16 project. Disclaimer here, I'm not associated with the team behind the Commander X-16, and I wasn't paid to do this. I bought my machine and everything in the box, including the computer itself, the very stylish X16 custom keyboard, the expansion card that is actually not safe to plug into the computer, and of course the mouse and power adapter. Although it didn't come with a power supply, no big deal except for the sense of dread that I felt powering it on for the first time worrying I bought something incompatible. But first a quick board tour here, we have the RAM, CPU, VR from the front, VR and IO from the back, expansion slots, onboard buttons, power in and the famous Yamaha chip, clock battery and of course system speed jumpers for when it's just too fast for you. First I'll plug in the video cable, then the keyboard, then the power adapter, then I'll plug in the power supply and then hit power on only to realize that my composite only TV isn't really compatible with this machine as a VGA display must be connected initially. I don't have any VGA compatible monitors on hand, so I bought the cheapest monitor that I could find, and it unfortunately isn't compatible with the X16. So I found an even cheaper monitor that works just fine. Now let's get into it. I'm not going to pull any punches here, but let's first talk about what the Commander X16 is able to do right out of the box. Of course, we have the menu command to change the display out, which doesn't automatically open when you click the menu key. I could set composite output as well here, but a lot of software is written so that it turns off composite display anyways, so it might as well stick with the VGA monitor. Then the SD card that came with the machine is packed with excellently written demos, tons of fun games compatible with the controllers, and a couple of other various helpful or interesting pieces of software, as well as full access to BASIC. Little things go a long way for modern usability here, like the standard keyboard layout, the fact that backspace actually goes back, the keys with pesky codes printed on them, and the function keyboard shortcuts like load and DOS prompts that save a lot of typing. But we're still dealing with an 8-bit machine here. Listing a directory can go over the total screen height, and trying to get a good look into the right directory is always going to be harder than just double-clicking on the file. But none of that should be a surprise here. And while the X16 does support Super Nintendo controllers, they plug into the back away from you. Same with the keyboard and mouse, so you'll be wrapping your cables around the machine. While the unofficial plans for the Generation 2 board look like they realize that it's better to have that out front, it's something you'll have to deal with on this model. Being an 8-bit machine, every component on this board can be easily understood and controlled, but with great power comes great hardware limitations. In terms of programming, limits can be a source of creative problem solving that push you to do something outside common conventions in order to pull off the impossible. And in that regard, the X16 is easy to begin working with and understand, but will take time to truly master. Take one of the real highlights of the machine, the Vera. It's true that the Vera has amazing graphical capabilities, including having multiple graphics modes, layers, and resolutions, along with 128 sprites. But you can't go crazy with it. You can't have two layers in 256 color bitmap mode at the highest screen resolution with 128 sprites all at once. You're still restricted by video memory, so it's up to the programmer to find the perfect balance for whatever you're working on. The best reason to recommend an X16 over a classic 8-bit system right now is here. Having an SD card solves the problem of a giant stack of floppy disks with your favorite software sitting somewhere beside you. The SD card provides basically unlimited storage. Well, it's limited to a few dozen gigabytes, but have you seen the size of these program files? The entire games folder is sitting in only 7 megabytes. That's much less than a megabyte per game. Just try finding that on Steam. The SD card also solves the problem of resource and program size restrictions. Extra data or even extra code can be stored on the SD card until it needs to be loaded into memory. However, while this is miles ahead of anything from the 80s, the speed of loading files sits somewhere between quick and very fast. And there's already a whole library of software written for the X16. And when I say library, I don't mean like your local library down the street. I mean like the Library of Alexandria. 
after it burned down. Because unless you really like demos, that's basically what you're looking at right now. Hang on now, in terms of games, which is what most people will end up spending their time on, there are plenty of great titles for the Commander X16 out there right now, both ports or adaptations of games from the 8-bit era, and original titles. Absolutely more than any other modern 8-bit system, and certainly more in the works, but we'll come back to this topic in a minute. So why may you want to consider not picking up a Commander X16? First of all, there's the official Commander X16 emulator, which can easily do everything you'd want to do in the hardware, both programming and playing games. There really isn't much of a difference. But while the machine may not be for everyone, I look at it this way. People still buy old hardware to write software or play games, like buying an Apple II or NES. So there is something special about having the real machine in your hands. Then there's the future models as well. Now these are still far off plans at this point, so don't get your hopes up for seeing generation 2 or 3 anytime soon. But if you're a user who is content only playing games, doesn't want to write any software, and doesn't mind the emulator for now, then maybe you should wait until the next generation. On the flip side, if you do want to write games or other software, this is the model for you. But if the X16 is trying to capture the feeling of old 8-bit computers, why not just buy one of those? Well, it's not just trying to serve as a substitute for those machines. The Commander X16 is something new, and what's more, there's a huge community around the X16 that we also need to talk about. When the Commander X16 pre-release was put on sale, I was almost certain these things were going to be bought up like tickets to a Taylor Swift concert. But they weren't, they lasted a few hours, and I ordered mine without any hassle. This might be because the primary audience for the X16 are those who grew up with 8-bit computers, meaning they were kids in the 80s. So certainly a more mature audience who I hope understood my Taylor Swift reference there. It makes sense then why, of the three places online, the community seems to be the most popular and active platform for discussion about the computer is the Facebook group, which can be helpful. When I had difficulties with my first monitor and I didn't know exactly what was wrong, I posted on there and everybody was friendly and supportive in their responses. But not everything I've tried to post on there before has always been approved to go public. Then there's the Discord server, which by the nature of Discord is chat-oriented, and I personally don't like to get any news or discuss things with others in a large group chat setting, so I had high hopes that the forum would be the place to be. And I used to be a bigger fan of the forum when it looked like this, but recently it was overhauled to look like an early 2000s forum. I guess I get it, kids in the 80s, they would have been around for the early internet forums. Still seems a little off theme to me though, and honestly I think the forum laid out this way is less organized and looks messier than before. Additionally, when the forum switched over to this new format, a lot of software, a good portion of it that had been written by users previously, was sent into the archive, mixed with the software that was written for previous versions of the emulator that may not work correctly anymore, and there isn't really any distinction between the two at all. This even affected the software that I wrote. There's nothing wrong with my software, you can see it works fine on the hardware. So why was it put out to pasture? I'm sure there's a technical reason, but it doesn't change the fact that it happened. Now I have two recommendations for the Commander X16 community, or really the team behind the project here. One is to create a better section for the software, something that looks more like an entry in an app store and less like a forum topic. Even just adding a thumbnail screenshot out front, and then having a standard display format, including how to run the program, will make it a much better end user experience for finding good software and letting good software get discovered. Bringing back software from the archive that works fine would be huge too. There's a lot of good stuff in there that's just lost in the mess. Number two that can be improved is documentation. Don't get me wrong here, there's plenty of good documentation already. I constantly have the programmer's reference guide open when I'm working on the system, and probably also one of Matt Heffernan's brilliant X16 assembly tutorials as well. These are gold. But what I like is a written guide perhaps even more comprehensive and in-depth than Matt's videos. Now while the plan is still to eventually have some sort of spiral manual, Here's what David said about further documentation. Uh, you know, we've got a pretty good amount of documentation on the website, and I've also been wanting to get a wiki created, which I think would be a good way to, because, you know, there's just so much information, and, and, and it'd be a much quicker way to find what you're looking for in a wiki than thumbing through a manual, so. I agree with David wholeheartedly here. I personally don't want a manual. If you do, that's fine. I'll just be over here using Control F to instantly jump to where I want to go in the wiki. When I was writing the program for the 8-bit guy intro parody, I wanted to know a little bit more about text mode, since the reference guide only mentions it a handful of times. So I did a Google search, nothing. I went to the forum hoping for something, and I searched Vera text mode, and got, the following words in your search query were ignored because they are too common. Mode. Text. Vera. Awesome. Uh, thanks forum. 
Ideally, a wiki would just have its own page on text mode or any other topic that you would want to look up. And if not, then everything I found out about it afterwards, I can contribute to the page to help others in the future. So just like how the NES dev wiki is the lifeblood of the NES homebrew and hacking community, if a well done x16 wiki doesn't become the most useful tool for x16 developers, then, well, at least I'll be happy, I guess. We certainly haven't hit the golden age of the X16 yet, and that's a good thing. This project has legs, especially given that this 8-bit technology is already obsolete, so you don't have to worry about chips getting better and having to buy the Commander X64 in a few years. I look forward to seeing what the individuals in the Commander X16 community continue to make in the years to come, with the only question being, who's going to be the first to port Smash? Or for you old guys, Pitfall 2.